I cannot help but think that a few of my viewers are gluttons for existential dread. Worse yet, I feel that many of my viewers might think that I am a member of this crowd. Though I often speak about existential topics, it is not because I delight in their torturous effects. It is because I, like many who have dealt with these questions, wish to cry out into the ether for an answer. Today, I am compelled to present yet another repetition of this nightmarish exercise. But be forewarned, if you truly understand the question I am about to ask you, you will most likely be tortured by it. Imagine yourself in the most vulnerable, lonely state. Then imagine a demon appearing out of nowhere just to speak to you. This demon says the following. This life as you now live it, and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more, and there will be nothing new in it, but every pain, and every joy, and every thought, and sigh, and everything unutterably small or great in your life will have to return to you, all in the same succession and sequence. Let us hypothesize that what this demon says is true, that the life you are living now, you will have to live again, and again, for all eternity. With this knowledge, you are seemingly left with two choices. Do you curse your fate, and the life you lead? Or do you embrace fate and life, despite all its tragedy? Do not answer so hastily. Please contemplate your personal answer to this question for the next few minutes. To enhance the quality of this discussion and the quality of your opinion, I would like to relate this concept of eternal recurrence to a piece of underrated and somewhat forgotten fiction. There is a series of games that were released roughly two decades ago, a series known as The Legacy of Cain. The five games in this series made powerfully eloquent use of not just the eternal recurrence concept, but many other concepts made by the same progenitor that being the 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. The legacy of Cain deals with Nietzsche's philosophical quandaries seriously. It doesn't answer them from a place of ideological bias. Instead, it puts forward the best arguments one could make for both sides. This ethic maintains itself when it comes to the game's discussion of eternal recurrence, and whether or not one should curse or embrace fate. In the case of the Eternal Recurrence, the Legacy of Cain games depict a universe where this concept is real. In the land of Nosgoth, all living beings are subjected to what is known as the Wheel of Fate, the inexorable, agonizing cycle of life, death, and rebirth. It is a cycle that was created by a being known as the Elder God, a character that was undoubtedly inspired by the demiurge of Gnostic tradition, a malevolent god whom the Gnostics viewed as the true creator and ruler of the Earth. The Gnostics invented the concept of the demiurge in order to explain the existence of evil, why life was permeated with death and suffering. They surmised that, like the Elder God, the Demiurge was not concerned with the suffering of lowly beings. It was primarily concerned with maintaining its rule, and it could only do that by continuing the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The existence of the Wheel of Fate ensured that all living beings were not capable of free will, that their lives were fated to a determined course from the beginning, that all life would begin, end, and then begin again in the same way, in perpetuity. Though Nietzsche's actual belief in the concept of eternal recurrence is debatable, what is not debatable is his belief in the concept of free will. He believed that human beings were deterministic creatures, who were never fully in control of their lives. There are strong arguments to be made for determinism, arguments which might make one contemplate the reality of the eternal recurrence. The suggestion that free will is an illusion, and that we are doomed to live the exact same life over and over might be too much for some to handle. Some might ridicule those who seek desperately for proof that human beings have some degree of free will. The Legacy of Cain games respond to these trolls with vociferous displeasure. I ask those of you who are zealots of determinism to consider the case of Raziel, the main character of Soul Reaver 1 and 2, and one of the main characters of Legacy of Cain Defiance. Consider his fate, 
and then I dare you to express the same level of enthusiasm for determinism. The audience is introduced to Raziel at the beginning of Soul Reaver 1. That game takes place 1500 years after the events of the first game, Blood Omen. At the end of Blood Omen, the character Cain was left with a choice. He could choose to restore or condemn the Nine Pillars of Nosgoth, pillars that were symbiotically connected to the health and well-being of Nosgoth. If he were to choose to restore the pillars, he would have to sacrifice himself. Canonically, Cain chose not to sacrifice himself, and he left Nosgoth to become a desolate wasteland. For 1500 years, Cain ruled Nosgoth as the most powerful being in existence, aided in part by the curse of vampirism. In that 1500 years, Cain adopted several vampiric lieutenants to help maintain his rule, the first of whom was Raziel who had served Cain a millennium. At the beginning of Soul Reaver 1, Raziel unwillingly committed a transgression against Cain. Raziel grew wings before Cain did, rendering his physiology greater than the master of Nosgoth. In an act of seeming jealousy, Cain rips the bones out of Raziel's wings and orders him to be cast into the Lake of the Dead. Given the vampiric weakness to water, Raziel was left to tumble into the endless abyss for 500 years. He suffered unspeakable pain, relentless agony. But nothing was worse than the hatred he felt for the hypocrisy that had damned him to this hell. Though he was brought back from the precipice of death by the Elder God, the agonizing pain he experienced for centuries, falling into the abyss, would forever remain in his heart. The only satisfaction he would gain would be to have revenge on Cain. I would hope that such a fate would give pause to the zealots of determinism, even if this example is fictional. If not, maybe consider the tragic fates of those who have existed in real life. Fates that were not related to one's weakness, one's lack of will to power, but were simply random tragedies. This is not to say one should dispense with the concept of determinism because of its emotional difficulty. Rather, it is a condemnation of those who wield the potential truths of determinism to promulgate misery, to satiate their own resentment. But let us not turn away from determinism and its discussion in the Legacy of Cain games. Cain, in some ways, is a mirror image of Nietzsche. He not only views free will to be an illusion, he knows that it is. He already knows his fate. It was foretold to him by the character Mobius by use of a device called the Chronoplast. Not only that, he, like Mobius, is conscious of who manufactured his fate, the Elder God. Though one is led to believe that Cain is corrupted and evil, primarily throughout the events of Soul Reaver 1, the reality becomes much more complicated as the story continues. Let me ask all of you to put yourself in Cain's position. Imagine you were given the binary choice that he was given. You could sacrifice your life to restore Nosgoth, which would perpetuate the rule of the malevolent Demiurge, or you could leave Nosgoth to ruin and embrace your will to power, just as Nietzsche suggested we should. I'm certain that in both cases you could easily point to numerous benefits and deficits present in both decisions. The only thing that would be consistent in either case is the continuance of suffering. I imagine most of us wouldn't want to make such a decision. On the one hand, you'd let an evil god continue the cycle of suffering, and on the other hand, the land and all its inhabitants wither away. I think that many of us would try to find a third solution to this problem, which is exactly what Cain attempted to do. In Soul Reaver 2, Raziel confronts Cain. At this time, Raziel is still driven by hatred for what Cain did to him. Moreover, his hatred has been encouraged by the Elder God, the one who brought him back to life. However, it is during this confrontation that Raziel begins to suspect that Cain's role as villain and the Elder God's role as benefactor might not be accurate. This suspicion comes when Cain expresses his desire to restore the pillars, to bring Nosgoth back to a state of health and prosperity. He then acknowledges his binary dilemma, one that he likens to a two-sided coin. Raziel is confused. How can Cain want to restore the pillars if he won't sacrifice himself? He only has the two choices. The game is rigged. In response to this, 
Cain says the following. Apparently, sir. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day it lands on its edge. The impetus I had to analyze the legacy of Kane games manifested from this quote. There's something indescribably numinous about it. I should know. Due to the fact that I've built my channel around the discussion of profound moments in video games, my viewers have been compelled to share this quote in my comment sections, inadvertently begging me to discuss it in a video. Within this quote, there is a realistic sense of hope. It grants human beings a sense of power, the one that Nietzsche encouraged his readers to seek within themselves so they can forge their own paths much like Cain chose to do. Though the possibility of a coin landing on its edge is extremely unlikely, it is not impossible. A computational model, provided by the American Physical Society, estimates that the chance of an American nickel landing on its edge is 1 in 6,000. Therefore, a coin flip is technically not a binary choice. This might come as a shock to many of you. It might make you wonder what other false binaries there are, ones that can be disproven by human ingenuity. Take cause and effect, for example, the physical law upon which all of existence is supposedly understood. Keep in mind, however, that while this law is virtually bulletproof, it might not be completely bulletproof. Who is to say that physical phenomena cannot be the cause of random chance, rather than cause and effect? The only reason that cause and effect exists as a law is because random chance exists to define it. Just like light cannot exist without darkness. In the simplest terms, just because there is a rule, there are always exceptions no matter how unlikely. In the case of Cain, he sought to be the exception. Instead of accepting the binary choice presented to him, he sought a third option. He sought to destroy the being that gave him that choice in the first place. Though the world he was born into was determinist, he was unable to accept those conditions. He felt there was a better option, even if that better option was near impossible to achieve. Even if he could achieve that third option, it would bring about drastic consequences. In the case of Raziel, Cain threw him into the abyss because he knew his future via Mobius and the Chronoplast. Cain knew the Elder God would turn Raziel against him, and try to kill him in order to restore balance to Nosgoth. But in this, Cain saw an opportunity. By condemning Raziel to the Lake of the Dead, Raziel shifted from the land of the living into the spectral realm, turning him from a vampire into a wraith. Wraiths, in the mythology of the Legacy of Cain games, are exempt from the Wheel of Fate, for they are not technically living beings. If Raziel were outside the Wheel of Fate's control, he could possibly have free will. And if Cain could convert Raziel to his side, then maybe, just maybe, the rule of the Elder God could be terminated, allowing the cycle of life, death, and rebirth to cease. Unfortunately, we'll never know because the series never had a final game. With all that said, I figure I have given you enough time and information to consider my previous question. If the concept of eternal recurrence is true, do you curse fate, do you embrace fate, or do you seek? The third option. Do you seek free will? Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm glad that there are still people out there who are interested in keeping the legacy of the Legacy of Kane games alive. Please hit that like button if you liked this video. When you do that, it tells the YouTube algorithm that not only this video, but all the other videos on my channel are worth watching. It will then share it in people's recommended feeds. This sharing around of my videos will help me further my goal of promoting the academic value of video games. Not only that, it will help me further this channel's second goal, which is the promotion of proper mental health. So please, hit the like button, it's totally free. Also, if you truly believe in my goals and want to ensure more content like this is produced, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description box below. Until next time, just remember, as always, and as per usual, stay yellow.